Hi, I'm Megan Bushhausen, and you're watching Notes from the Dev Video Edition. Hi, welcome to today's episode of Notes from the Dev. I'm your host, Megan, and usually we have a guest on, but today, surprise, you have a guest me. Um, today, I am going to show you one of our interactive emails that we sent out for email camp last year. It was my first interactive email that I have ever made, and I learned a lot. And I hope by showing you this code that you can also see how easy it is to get up and going with interactive email. Uh, we want to send out something that just surprised and delighted our subscribers and make them want to sign up for email camp, and I think we succeeded. So this is what we sent out for email camp last year. So we sent this email out twice, like two different iterations of it. Um, so we had a lot of information we wanted to show. We wanted to show speakers from our two days. Uh, we wanted to show how it was for email marketing and email development. Um, so we decided to go the interactive route and kind of give people a different experience depending on what day they were looking at. So if we go back down, here are our buttons. If I click this day two, then we find our email development experts. And for some extra fun, dark mode is even kind of neat. So when we look in dark mode, everything in light mode was like super bright and fun. And now when we go into dark mode, our colors change a bit and even our images change for all those places that support dark mode media query to match that nighttime dark mode theme. See here, even on day two, that image switches. So how did I go about coding this email? So when going through this email, we use the tried and true interactive method called the checkbox method. Um, this simply uses different form inputs and in this instance, a radio input to make sure that these buttons switch out. So we will find this code, there we go. So we contain everything within one label and start nesting from there to make sure that the inputs work in AOL and Yahoo. This also works across all your Apple devices, so you're good there. And if we go down, so essentially what happens is that we have our initial label, then we have our first input, and here we have our type is radio, our name is day, that's just so that we have our inputs named the same thing so that they work, um, our ID, which is unique to each input, um, hidden, make sure that the actual radio input doesn't show because that would look kind of strange, uh, and then just some styles. We have checked here, which is required on you know, one of the inputs, and this tells the email what information to show. So we can see here day one is checked, so our button is a little bit of a darker purple. And if I click on day two, you'll see now that's a darker purple. And if we go through this code a little bit, you'll see how we have our first input here, and through the spans, uh, this is our label. And then we have another label. And within that label, we have our day two input. And through there, we have our day two content nested in first. So we nest kind of in, and then we bring it out. So once we go down through all this content, we will see the day two content pop up. Oh, we're almost there. It's a lot, a lot of code. And here we are coming down to day one. So we can see our class is day one. That's so we can you know, apply our styles to it. And all that content is down here. When I initially coded this email, I did like the shell almost. Um, 
with my email design system, so I could get that part up and running really quickly and only mostly worry about the interactive portion on it. But because this is a bit different than how I usually have our emails look, um, you know, these background colors are different. We have this green matching the image on day two. We had that yellow matching the image. Uh, it was easier for me to export that processed code and bring it back into my editor and then make my adjustments from there, knowing that a lot of adjustments in this email won't be used again. So it was in a way safer for me to do that instead of trying to make some additional changes in the email design system where that would just globally affect everything. Um, so that's why I chose to you know, show the email and do the email this way with all my process code, as opposed to the email design system that I usually use, which condenses a lot of this. So from here, how do these inputs actually work? So we went over the checked in the input, but what does that actually mean? In our CSS, you'll see here, we have this check pseudo selector on our day one and day two. So this allows the ID to look to see if, to see if the input is checked. And if it is, it'll put display block on your class. And that's what allows us to hide and show that information. So like on day one, that was checked. When I hit day two, that is the input that becomes checked. And we do display block and it pops that in there and then shows that information. We do the same thing with this disclaimer down here, because we always wanna make sure people know that an email is interactive, uh, because if it's not interactive, we can give them an alternative to view the interactive email. And really, this code here, that's all it is, that's all the CSS you need to make it work. And that's it, like it's really that easy to make it work as long as all your nesting is correct in the, uh, HTML, then you're pretty much good to go. Some other things that we had to do is take everything else into account, like Gmail and Outlook, that would not show this interactive piece. So what we did there is come up with some Outlook classes specific to the web. This is specific to Outlook web um, and some specific to Gmail classes. And what we would do, what I did is, let's look up the class. We have this Gmail show desktop. And down here, I essentially recoded the day two speakers section so that on Gmail, it would hide these buttons and it would really hide this whole part here, the preview your path with the buttons and the disclaimer. Um, and it would then show the speakers for day two underneath here so we can switch over to email and acid so you can see what that looks like to go down we have our keynotes and from here we have no buttons and as you can see after liana we have our email developers pop in with our last cta at the bottom and that pretty much takes care of our layout on any number of our email clients that the interactive email won't show on. Another really fun thing with this email that I did not show before, because of course I forgot to show it, is if I turn the images off, we have some fun alt text. So we know sometimes email geeks like to look at emails without those images on to see what happens. So we gave everyone really, really fun titles. And I love this part of the email that almost no one will see. So I'm showing it to you. I don't apologize for showing it. So you see, we gave everybody super, super fun titles for day one. And oh, where's my buttons? There they are on day two. Don't forget your alt text, always really important. So with this email, I started off in a totally different place. I initially wanted these keynote little like hero section, I guess you would call it, 
I wanted these underneath the two inputs. But because of Gmail and Outlook and having to do that little bit of a recoding that I showed you before, it just totally like blew up my code or that 102 kilobyte um, limit. And it was just like way too much. Um, so I had to rethink how to do this a little bit and found the good solution was to take those keynotes out and just have them show in the whole email. So then, you know, when we had to fall back, it showed in the same spot and we didn't have to recode the email twice, essentially, into the same place. And my code came down a lot in size and it was just like, overall a lot better and i think the email turned out a lot better too um, so when you're thinking about your interactive emails you need to think about you know how you do the interactive piece but how it's also going to fall back and account for that so you're not essentially coding like your entire entire email twice i would not put a ton a ton of information into uh like tabish tab format. I don't know why I said tabish. That's a, not a word. And <laughs> do a tab format uh, like this with the buttons. Uh, definitely, you know, keep that down to a minimum. You won't run into those problems that I did. I hope you have found this code really helpful. I feel like interactive email can seem intimidating. I was intimidated by it for a really long time. And once you get your head wrapped around kind of the actual simplicity of it, all you need is, you know, some labels and nesting some um, inputs with some pseudo selector in the CSS, uh, and you're good to go. Um, I hope this showed you how actually easy it is. Um, and I hope you, you know, take this concept and run with it to surprise and delight some of your subscribers because, you know, that's always fun and we should have fun with email sometimes. Um, so I hope, I'm saying hope a lot, it's fine. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching Notes from the Dev. This is usually the part of the show where I'm like, hey person, where can we find you? So we do a, hey Meg, where can we find you? Um, find me on Twitter at Meg Bosch. You can find me on LinkedIn at Megan Bosch. My website is megbosch.com um, or find me hanging out in the email geek slack. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, follow us, share all the things. If you have something interesting that you'd like to bring onto the show, show us an email that you coded and how you did it. Uh, give me a shout. Let me know. I'm always looking for new guests. Bye.